In this video, I'm going to take you through a project that I did a few years ago. My brother and I own a rental property and we redid the floor. We put in this vinyl plank. In case you're wondering what it is, this is the actual product. And I'll put the information in the description. I don't really have a preference on a brand, but you will want to look around and compare Home Depot to Lowe's to other flooring places because they are going to have some differences in the material. Let me show you close up what we used. This one has a half millimeter of surface wear layer. It's a clear layer on top. It has a bit of a texture to it, so it looks a little bit more like wood. And that is glued to, see that light band underneath that? That is the printed image, so that's what gives it this wood appearance. And that gray layer, which is the core, and then the dark layer underneath is an acoustic pad. Let me show you how these click together. You're just gonna put these up like that push down and that's it, they're locked. Very simple install. With whatever brand vinyl that you choose, the manufacturer probably has some really good instructions and probably even videos on how to install it. So I'm not gonna cover those points because they're probably well addressed there on how to not line up the seams and things like that. I wanna give you some tips that you might not get in those instructions. I would definitely recommend getting one of these. This is a multi-tool, an oscillating tool. What happens when you pull the trigger this saw vibrates. It doesn't move much, but it does move in incredibly quick. And you'll see me use this in the video and it makes cutting certain angles and certain parts just a breeze. A table saw is what I use to cut everything and it makes a bit of a mess. So you're gonna also need a shop vac. Uh, it worked great for me. I didn't have any problems with a table saw. They do make vinyl cutters, but they're kind of expensive. And then after the project, what are you gonna do with it? You know, I didn't wanna spend $200 on a tool that I use almost never. And you're probably not going to do this for a living, so maybe you don't want to own one of those. I guess you could sell it when you're done, but those are the tools you're going to need. And I'd like to thank TrevLab. You know, one of the things <laughs> that you might not think about is headphones and speakers. You're going to, this is a long project, you're going to want to listen to something. They're not a sponsor, but uh, they did send me these to see if I'd like them, and, uh, and I've been using them for a while. Let me show you what they do, and there's also a discount for you if you want to get some of these yourself like that. Really clean design. You've probably seen something like this before. It's water resistant and it has a lot of features that are really Power cool. Power on. Blue and it sounds really on. nice. And by the way, the prices on all these Power things on their on. Web website is really cheap. I thought it was, I was shocked. This is under 50 bucks and this is one of my favorites that they sent. They make runners headphones. They make over the ear headphones. These little earbuds I thought were awesome. They are magnetic, they just pop right in. They can charge five times just in this case. So you bring this case with you. You don't need to plug it into anything. It'll recharge these up to five hours, five times each charge. Um, it's a pretty good deal I thought for under 50 bucks for these. They sound good. When you take them out, they automatically turn on and connect to my phone. I don't have to turn them on. Um, I just thought these were great. This is quality. I have no problem recommending them to you guys. I will be buying some of their stuff myself. And um, you, you'll open it up and it is nice. I mean, look at these headphones. They come in a nice case as well. It's not cheap. So anyway, the discount code is DIY Treb Lab. If you want to pick some up at a discount yourself, the link's in the description. Thank you, Treb Lab. And um, uh, let's get on to the project. Here's what we're dealing with on this project. The hard floor and the carpet met in the middle of the register. I thought that was stupid. So we extended the floor a little bit and there used to be carpet in between the entry and the kitchen. So we just connected it. So we have a big long walkway. Where you see the particle board is where we added particle board and lucky for us, it came to the exact height as the vinyl. You cannot have a drop off. You will feel it underneath your feet. So if you have a height difference in your floor, I'd say if it's more than a millimeter or two, you're gonna feel it later on. So you wanna get your floor flat. Here's my method of removing baseboard. I cut along the edge to separate the caulking and then I have a long flexible blade that pries it from the wall. When you take off the trim, take it off in order and each piece have consecutive numbers on the back. So start with one and then go to the next piece and mark it two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you have a big pile of trim, it's gonna save you a lot of time later. In some spots, you'll leave the trimmer baseboard on, but you'll need to cut it at the bottom to slide the new floor underneath it. In this case, use the multi-tool. You can just slide it on a piece of scrap vinyl and that'll cut it really easy. 
Now, if you want to do a really good job, you have to make sure you're compensating for the height of the blade. If I remove a little bit of the layer of the vinyl, now it lowers the blade and the vinyl will fit in perfect. As I mentioned, bits of vinyl are gonna get everywhere. You want to cut this in a different location if you can, not in the location you're installing it. The chips will get in the cracks and you'll have to vacuum them out a lot to fit the boards in. When it comes to floor registers, don't try to cut it perfectly at first. Just leave some overhang and then later come back with the multi-tool and you can get a nice clean cut. In this project, we did need to accommodate one step going down in the basement and that requires a bull nose. Now this particular brand did not manufacture a bull nose for this step, so we made our own. The vinyl does not bend just as is. So what we did was cut some grooves in the back with the table saw lengthways. Then I put the vinyl in the back window of my car on a hot August day and left it in there for about 20 minutes. And then it became unbelievably flexible. You can see here, I bent it around and glued and stapled it and it came out perfect. One thing you'll notice with vinyl plank flooring as opposed to maybe just a solid wood hardwood floor that's nailed down, you can go both directions. So I'm working backwards, which normally you don't do on a hardwood floor, but with this flooring, it's not a problem. Here's a tip on trying to get small gaps to meet. When you snap them together, sometimes every now and then, you do still have a gap. Take a scrap and that will get the, all these little gaps to close up. Now, I'm not a fan of transition pieces. I think they're ugly. I don't like to feel the lump when I go in from one room to the next. So I wanted to avoid that here where it met the carpet. So instead, I just beveled the edge, a 45 degree bevel with a router, and it came out really nice. No need for a transition piece. By the way, if you're on the fence about doing this yourself, you think maybe it's too hard or it might be difficult. Out of all the floorings I've installed, I've done vinyl roll, I've done hardwood, engineered wood, ceramic, stone tile. I've done industrial carpet. I've done a lot. Even the Pergo, remember when they had Pergo that you glued the boards together and you had to strap it? Boy, that was a nightmare. Out of all of those floors that I've installed, this is by far the easiest and it's the only floor that I actually don't mind doing anymore. It's kind of fun really because you get instant results so fast and it looks really clean. Anyway, that's my opinion, that's my two cents. If you have any comments or suggestions, questions for me about this project, go ahead and leave them in the comments section and I'll do my best to respond. Uh, again, thanks Treb Lab for the uh, headphones. They're very appreciated. And if you wanna get some yourself, go ahead and use the code. I will talk to you guys later. Take care and have an awesome day.